let's get right into this guys and I'm going to show you how to make an asset a digital asset turn make a, a, um, a procedural forest and turn it into a digital asset so let's get into this let's control click a grid and a box let's um, go to our modify and select copy to points select our box hit return select our grid hit return this copies a box to every point on the grid now let's select our grid and let us scale it up like so let's up our rows and columns like this let's scale it up maybe a tad more turn off our contraction plane let's back out here now we have a box instance to every grid but it needs to be a little more it's too uniform so let's go over here and right click and type tap in a scatter let's now that is a scatter you'll see we have a number of points 5,000 which is way too many so let's make that like 400 now we have 400 little boxes and you see they're kind of um, random some are close and some are far apart and stuff like that so now let's bring our scatter node down right click our grid again and type mountain plop down our mountain node and now let's take our height to about four and now when we do that you can see some of our grid our boxes are higher than the others we can up our height even more than that if we want and now we have even more randomness like this which is looking pretty good there Okay, so now we have our mountain in our scatter. We've adjusted our roughness and everything. So now we're going to add a node called an attribute create. So I'm going to go over here in my main menu and select attribute create. And let's select our mountain and hit return. And as you can see, it'll sling it in right there below our mountain. And we're going to leave all the um, settings the same, but we're going to rename it to P scale. P S C A L E and I'm going to hit return now it's going to look like everything disappeared but it didn't you see our mountain still there I'm going to right click on attribute create and type paint and throw in my paint node okay so now I'm going to go up here and type override color and I'm going to type P scale and hit return okay now we have this brush setup so I'm gonna go in here and set my foreground color to maybe 10 and my opacity to maybe 0 0.3 hit return let's up our radius to about 0 0.6 and now when I go in here you can see I got this little brush okay so let's take our brush let's up our radius a little more than that and now when I paint if you look real close I'm painting in these cubes across the points. So let's up our opacity a little bit. And I'm going to keep working at this and I'll edit out the video and I'll be back in a second. Okay, now as you can see, I have a lot of randomness painted in here. I went in here and as you can see, I can paint in and out by hitting the middle button or paint in with the left mouse button. So now I've got a pretty good random distribution of trees here or boxes rather so let's go over here and let's tab in at L system type L system and bring it in and drop it and let's replace that in where the box is and now as you can see we have a random assortment of trees where we painted and we can always go back into our paint properties and paint some more trees in as you can see I'm doing here let's paint, let's paint a lot of trees in Uh, that's looking a lot better. Let's paint them up here on this mountain range. Okay, now we've painted us some pretty good little trees in there, a pretty good little beginnings of a forest. Okay, so now let's right click and type in a switch. And let's add a switch and let's pop our box into that switch now 
you can see with this switch up here, I can select between boxes and trees, which is good for low res or high res if you're working, you know. So now we've got all this. So let's make it an asset. Let's select everything and hit Shift C. And this will bring it into a subnet. And let's name it Forest. Okay, now let's right click on it and say Edit Parameter Interface. Now we can double click down in here. We can click on any parameter. What was pretty important? This switch parameter was important. Let's go up to our grid. The size of our grid. We'll drag and drop it in. How about our, our rows and columns? Let's drag and drop them in. How about our mountain range? Our height? We might want to adjust our height. Whoever is using it. Um, let's scatter. Number of points. We'll want that. Like that. Let's go to our L systems. Random scale. And random seed. And our box node. We'll drop the size of it in there. And we'll say apply. Okay, and that will apply everything. I'm going to say accept. Now when I go back up here, I have this forest. Now, as you can see, when I click on it, I have access to all those attributes that um, I gave to it, like grid number of rows. You can see when I do this, the model, the trees, update, the scatter, the number of trees. If I want more trees, you can see I've got millions of trees now, or I can bring it back down here to very sparse this um, the L system randomness the box size Let me go back out here now we have all of our this grid size here let's bring it up to about 200 now our forest is spread out real long in one way as you can see now this is a digital forest. I can change the size of it. I can make it wider by changing all these attributes that we put it into the asset. Now all I gotta do is export this, go up to file, say save. I'll save it. It'll come out on my desktop and here it is, the forest asset. If I go to Houdini and say file new, or let's cancel that out. Okay, file new, discard a new, file open, Let's, let's go to our forest asset we saved and open it. And there's our forest asset right there. For any 3D artist who wants to, to use it and to adjust all the settings that we give him. So that is the power of Houdini, guys. Thanks for watching.